Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to use the information available on Mergent to figure out the firm's interest rate on the debt that they have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the income statement and balance sheet that we have. And if you start off and you take a look at the firm's income statement, and you go to their interest, there's this interest income, which is a negative number, right? And a negative number means that they paid interest rather than earned it. Um, but the reason they give you that number is negative is because it's not obvious. And the reason for that is because this is what's called net interest. It's interest earned minus interest paid. What we want is interest based, we want actually, we only want the interest that they paid, which is available on the as reported statement. So we need to look here on the as reported statement and look at all the interest. You might have a lot of different kinds of interest. Um, add up the ones that they paid and don't include the ones that they earned. That's the general rule. Hershey's has this row, interest expense gross. I'm going to grab that because that is just the interest that they paid. I'm going to bring it over here into the weighted average cost of capital and I'm going to plop it right about there. Now I need to figure out how much debt they have. They've got debt that they, on, on obligations that need to be paid this year. That's current debt. And then they've got debt on obligations that won't be paid for a while. That's long-term debt. Both of those things can come out of the standardized statement, at least more often than not. Except they're on the balance sheet, right, of course. So current debt, where is that? Current debt is debt that needs to be paid this year. We'll grab that first. It goes here, here, and then long-term debt, long-term debt and leases, that's a debt that doesn't have to be paid this year. That's long-term debt. We've got a while to pay that. So now that we've got these pieces, I'm going to delete some of these rows or these cells and shift the rest of it to the left. There's something I want that I didn't include, and that's that I want the dates. I don't want them in that color, but this is the 2014 information, 2013. Right, we're gonna do each year. That way I know what years I'm looking at. Otherwise it gets kind of confusing, as you can probably imagine. What are these numbers? Sorry, my husband is out there drilling in the background. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add up our total debt, right? They paid this much interest. Well, we need to figure out how much debt they paid that amount of interest on. And this is going to be our total debt. Line that up to the right, and we're going to add these things up. Okay, that's our total debt. Get that black cross, drag it over to the right. So, we know that this is the amount of interest we paid, and this is the amount of debt that we paid that interest on. Although the tricky part is, is that the balance sheet gives us a snapshot, right, of a moment in time. What debt, how much debt did they have on, oops, this is actually 2013. Before I can tell you the story, I need to really have my dates right. So on December 31st, 2013, they had told this was their total debt. On December 31st, 2012, this was their total debt, right? But over the course of the whole year, they paid this amount of interest. And we can imagine that on a day-to-day -day basis, between the time that this statement was made and the time that this statement was made, the debt went up, the debt went down, the debt went up, the debt went down. So we don't really exactly know the balance that this balance of debt that that interest expense was paid upon. So what we do is we base it on average debt. And this is our interest rate, RD. And it is going to be equal to the interest expense we paid divided by the average balance of debt.
All right, so for this here, it would be the average. No, it wouldn't be. It would be Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. The interest expense divided by the average balance of debt. So this year and last year, right? Because last year, the end of last year is the same thing as the first day of this year. So these two numbers represent the balance of debt over the course of the year. You can drag it all the way across, but beware, because this number is based on an empty cell, so this number doesn't count. These are all percentages. Give them two decimal places. And as long as they're somewhat consistent, right, which is what they are here, we're just going to use the most recent. That is going to be our rate of debt. The reason for that is that the interest rate environment changes. Interest rates go up and down year by year. And if we use our old interest rates of debt, right? Interest rates might've been higher a few years ago, or they might've been lower. So it's the most current year that is the most relevant. So that's the interest rate that we are gonna use as our cost of debt. Okay, happy calculating. Save early, save often.